Let's deploy a Strapi CMS with Cleaver. Right here we see the splash screen for a newly deployed Strapi CMS. Let's see how we could use Cleaver to deploy a new headless Strapi CMS out into production. In Cleaver, you can see that I already have a provision server. The cool thing about this is that this production server right here is on Hetzner and I use one of their cheapest plans that they have. You may think that's not super special, but it actually is once we get to the build process of building the Strapi CMS site and deploying it. Later on, we're going to talk a little bit more about why that is a common issue and how Cleaver helps you get around it. Let's get started and click into the server and add a new site. Now on the server, let's add a new site. And what we're going to add is a Node.js SSR app. All right, so I'm going to select that option. And then for domain name, I'm just going to use a free domain for this example and then click on add. Now that we have our Strapi site configured, I want to go into the database area and add a database for our Strapi site to use. I'll click on the database icon, and in here, I already have MySQL 8.0 installed. All I need to do is add a new database name, a database user, and a password. Let's call this Strapi for the database name. For user, I'm going to put admin and password, password. Okay, I have the new database here with the user. I'm going to use these credentials and add it to the strapi.env file so that Strapi could connect to this database. We'll now head over to the web app section and then complete the setup for our Strapi CMS site. First, we're going to have to tie this to a repo. And for this, I want to use GitHub. And I'll show you why in a bit. So I'm going to select GitHub as my VC provider. And repository, I have this under my Strapi. And I'm going to click on Update to save this information. Next thing, under npm build, I want to change the entry point and argument from just index.js to npm start for arguments. For the build command, we'll leave that as is. And for the artifact path, we'll add in build. And then I'm going to save these details. Time to move on to the GitHub's Actions tab. And this is really where the special sauce comes into play. So before I said we're on the cheapest server that Hetzner has to offer. The problem with this is during the build stage of your app on that server, there's not enough processing power for the server to be able to build successfully the application on that server. So what we can do is actually use GitHub Actions to act as our build server. That way GitHub will build the application for us and then send us the output so we could then activate it on our server, which not only allows us to host our strappy headless CMS on a cheap server, but it also helps maintain server resources so that our server could concentrate on doing what it needs to do, which is hosting our CMS and not acting as just a build server. So let's enable this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a new workflow file on the GitHub repository for this project. And then it's immediately gonna build the project and send that output back to Cleaver, where Cleaver will then deploy it out from there. But before GitHub completes that action, let's real quick go into our environment section and add the environment variables for our project. And that's just the database information I added in before. And sync that up. Cool, let's go to GitHub and see if it's building our project. All right, here on GitHub, we could see this folder with the workflow file that Cleaver added, which shows GitHub how to build the project and send it back to Cleaver. Then under actions, what we see is this current process underway right now. Let's see if we could click into it. And it looks like it's currently building it. We can see that GitHub finished building the project and once completed, sent the output information back to Cleaver. And if we go back to Cleaver and look under deployments, hey, we can see that Cleaver actually already picked it up and deployed it out and it took about 85 seconds to do that. We could also see that we have some 200 responses from different areas around the globe and some latency times. Therefore, I'm thinking that this successfully deployed. Let's take a look. We'll just click to visit the site. And all right, here we go. We have a Strapi site that we're able to deploy without using our own server as a build server, but to use GitHub instead, which then allows us to use one of the more economic plans that VPS providers have. 